Hi, and welcome to part 3 of us learning and using the clay framework. And today, if we kind of go back to our list, sorry about that, um, I have something stuck in my teeth. Whatever. Today we're going to do text. And uh, like a, a big part of this is just loading a font. And for font, I was thinking we were going to use this one. Uh, this is actually the one I'm using here. It's the one I'm using in my terminal as well. Um, so I will kind of, I guess, put this in the description perhaps, or if you just Google zero X proto, um, go into downloads and just download the zip file. You should be able to extract and put just like I have. Um, let's, let me show you. Yeah, you know what? We're going to download this. So we'll do it together. Um, so here we are, if I kind of extract, let's see, no, kind of extract these. Mm -mm. So here are the fonts and we will use, we won't use any of these. Let's remove, um, we won't use any OTF. We will use these three. So the italic, regular and bold. So if we just kind of place these files, I will copy them from here. And I will put them into our resources folder, which you already should have in your case here. Uh, cool. So with these fonts, we're going to start by creating a function called we can let's call it either load or maybe insert font um, and this is going to take in a uint32 for the font id it's going to take a, an integer from font size and it's going to take in a path to the actual resource um, and if we go into so of course Raylib handles our rendering, so Raylib will hold the fonts and the renderer a kind of thing we have uh, has a global variable, sorry, it has a global variable called Raylib fonts that holds this thing, which ties together a font with a font ID. So we will actually fill up this array um, and the slot will be font ID and we will start by assigning the font ID field like so and then we will do really fonts font ID font will be load font um, extended which takes in a file name so path takes in a font size uh, and here we will do something interesting we will actually double this um, it sort of increases the the loaded resolution so it will take up uh, more memory but it will increase increase the clarity for us and we want that especially for this font uh, which I found looked much better if you do it this way um, and one last thing to do also when you load in fonts that you usually do uh, just to make sure that it has the correct kind of filtering um, on the actual texture. So really fonts font ID dot font dot texture 
and filter we will use texture filter try linear um, which it's a common filtering method for fonts uh, yeah so now we have this function that we can call uh, and load in a font into the actual Raylib fonts variable so let's do that insert font uh, so here it becomes kind of uh, tricky, say we put 0 here, so we put 0 and we load, let's say 16, um, and then we do the path, 0x proto regular ttf, uh, so say you kind of do this, um, this number zero will become very important later on um, in this code over here when we actually put the, the text, uh, whatever you have to put somewhere the zero, just to make sure that it knows to use this. Let's see this font that we have loaded here from the Relib fonts. So it's, it's it kind of needs to know the index or the font ID. Um, so keeping track of us, uh, loose zero is not good. So what we will instead do here, if we go up to here, um, we will actually have these numbers here I have come up, I have come up with. So we will have um, a normal, for the normal, zero x pro, the normal 16, so font size 16, we will have normal 24. Uh, bold 16, bold 24, italic 16, italic 24, and then the font ID title. Um, so this is kind of how we will set it up and down here I will just copy paste and save you the time. So you can, you can write this if you want uh, by yourself. But we're kind of loading, tying together, like tying together regular to normal 16, tying together regular with size 24 to this ID, um, which again just just does this, just puts in the in the slot of font ID. We load the font with the set size. Um, yeah. Let's see what we should do next. Uh, I think we are ready to draw our text. And one thing I did that you might as, might want to do yourself. Um, I kind of changed this to be a bit more squished on the on the height. So I increased the height and decreased the width a bit. Uh, and this is no longer true. But I, I, re I realize we don't need an, an exact 16 by 9 aspect ratio really, it doesn't, does not matter. So where should we put some text? I think we can start by putting in the title, that would be fun. Um, so the way you do text, just as with any other, uh, kind of, or actually this is the first children element we're doing. So one thing you might notice is that when you do a, a, like uh, an, an element with with like layouts or something that has sizing and kind of constraints, you you begin by doing clay and then you enter in the stuff. Uh, but in the case for text, you can just do clay text. Uh, which in turn takes in a text config and that's where you can specify uh, like the size and stuff uh, so we'll do play text uh, it's a children to header so it's put inside of the parentheses of the this clay tag um, and you specify a string if you control click this you can see it's uh, here it expects uh let's see let's put this here it expects a clay string 
But you might be wondering what the fuck, what is this crazy clay string? It's actually just a wrapper. Um, it's a wrapper for const char pointer, which is a C string. Um, and it, it kind of tracks length just for convenience. Um, and the way you convert a clay or a const char is just by doing clay all caps clay string macro um, and you kind of write your thing here uh, so mars rover control panel so this converts it to a clay string semicolon of course um, and the second element here text config um, This one is kind of kind of a doozy, so we will I will create a variable up here called uh, I will call this one header text config, and I will initialize this up here um, just for ease of use, really, so we don't have that much uh, crap down here. Um, so here we get to use the font ID. So for the header, I want to use font ID title. And the font size for title is, I don't remember, 46. And you get to specify the text color as well. So we will do color dark, same as the background. Um, Yeah, this is the yeah, okay. We can so this I for some reason get this error. Expression must have a constant value, um, but this compiles, so I'm just gonna ignore it. I'm not sure because color dark is obviously a const clay color. Um, I have tried like things. Uh, this always this doesn't really change anything, yeah, so I'm not sure. I have also tried doing this to make it stop complaining, but yeah, whatever. This will compile. Uh, so we do header text config. Um, let's see, does it expect a pointer? Yeah, it expects a pointer. So that's why we put this here. Uh, gives the address of the actual variable um, yeah so let's see if this works do, do I make we have some error here but argument of type uh, expected clay element text element config clay text element config uh, but argument is of type const text element config pointer so let's remove the const then yeah so it mm, yeah it expects a pointer to something that isn't constant so we can't have const build run and we have our text here very nice um, Let's see, let me think a bit. Yeah. So, let's see, header has here, yeah, of course. So the reason the reason this text is to the left is because the, the default alignment we set, or the alignment we set here was zero. Um, and zero, let's see what zero is actually, so alignment. Zero is left. So what we want is right. So we will put this value instead of zero here. So changing the header child alignment to be clear line x center will put the text in the center here. Cool. So let's round off by also putting some more text down in the footer. So I will copy paste this here. 
uh, remove the cons. So once again, creating a clear text element config, calling it footer text config, and setting it to be bold 16 with the font size 16 and the text color, color dark. Um, and if we go down here to the footer, we can kind of put some text. I'm once again just going to copy paste in some text I have. Um, so just as up here, we do clay text converting to clay string with this macro and then passing in the clay text config. Um, and uh, uh, let's see, I'm not entirely sure where we're doing this. That does not need to be done, right? I can just do this. Yeah. So, kind of, we're just copy pasting uh, lines of text into the footer. And the footer has uh, a line on center Y, but a line. Actually, write this out. Clay align x left. And let's see if this looks. Um, so here we have an issue right now. So the, the elements are aligning left to right, but we actually want top to bottom. Um, so how do we do that? If we kind of remember how we did that before, we do uh, dot. Let's see, no, dot, uh, let's do, do, do. layout direction, yeah. And layout direction will be clay, top to bottom. We put this inside the clay layout field. So compiling, and there we go. That's pretty nice. Uh, what I will act actually want to remove like one of them like that yeah so four is enough um, these are just placeholder we will uh, replace these perhaps later by actual logs from the game um, yeah let's see how long 17 minutes that's it um, that's how you do text. Uh, moving on from this in the next one, uh, we're going to combine the thing with the rectangle and text to create button elements that we can place in our UI. Um, and after we have buttons and the text, we can actually kind of work on logic for, for the UI. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, anything else? I'm not sure. Um, if you have any questions, just put them down below. Uh, otherwise, the next part uh, I hope will be out tomorrow. Um, and that would be part three. Yeah, no, this was part three, part four. Yeah. Okay, see ya.